Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Week Ahead video with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Uh, this video has been recorded on Friday the 6th of April. Uh, just The time has just gone uh, 12 p.m. BST, UK, uh, mid mid midday UK time. And bearing in mind, uh, the non-farm payrolls figure is report, uh, figures are out in about 90 minutes time. So some of the levels that I talk about in this video may be out of date. So just, just, just keep in mind in relation to that. And we are looking ahead to the week, Monday the 9th to Friday the 13th of April. Now, to be, to be perfectly honest, it's a quietish week next week. Uh, but Wednesday is actually a fairly busy day. Uh, on the early hours of Wednesday morning, we have CPI and PPI numbers coming out from China. Uh, and in recent months, th those two in economic indicators have actually been going in the opposite direction. Uh, CPI has actually been, has been on the rise, whereas PPI on the producer side has actually been in decline. So these figures will give us a good indi indication of what is going on in the Chinese economy. Uh, so the cost of living is on, is on the rise in China, but is that down to firmer commodity prices or is it down to actual demand? And seeing as PPI on the producer end of things has actually been in decline, it could suggest that actually demand isn't as strong as the CPI numbers would let on. And if you are trading markets such as high-grade copper, any of the London-listed mining stocks, BHP Billiton, Rio Tinto, Glencore, or even the Aussie dollar, keep an eye out for the Chinese CPI and PPI numbers. Uh, at half nine uh, London time on, on a Wednesday, we have a few updates from the UK. Um, manufacturing production, industrial production, and also construction output all come out at half nine on Wednesday morning. Uh, bearing in mind there's a lot of chatter that the Bank of England will raise interest rates next month. Uh, that this was, was largely driven by the fact two of the nine um, Bank of England members last month voted to, voted to raise rates then. So there's a lot of pressure and a lot of speculation that the Bank of England could ra raise rates next month. But keep in mind, since then, uh, we've had some not so hot economic indicators out of the UK. The manufacturing figures from the UK sh showed that the manufacturing sector is growing at a, at a slower at a slower pace than initially thought. The construction PMI report actually swung to contraction territory, which was a large shock. And even this week, uh, the the service figures, which accounts for about 80% of British output, uh, came in much lower than expected. It was a quite a substantial decline in the growth rate of the UK service sector. So with all this in mind, uh, traders will be paying attention to the economic updates from the UK as they're trying to figure out will the Bank of England pull the trigger and raise rates next month. Uh, speaking of central banks, on Wednesday night, we have the Federal Reserve minutes uh, from, from the meeting last month when the Fed hiked interest rates by 0.25%, meeting expectations. It was the first interest rate hike of 2018, and to be honest, it was widely expected. Uh, but traders are going to be paying attention to the tone and the language, and also the mindset uh, of, of, the, of the Federal Reserve members, trying to ascertain, are we going to see three or potentially four rate hikes from the Fed in 2018? Traders are still a bit divided over, over, over which, which uh, number it is. is. Is it going to be three? Is it going to be four? At the beginning of the year, there's a lot of talk of, of four interest rate hikes. Now that we, we've, we've seen some political issues in relation to the potential trade war between the US and China. That could actually muddy the water uh, ever so slightly. So the Federal Reserve have previously stated they're going to focus on the economic indicators and hence why you should keep an eye out for Friday's non-farm payrolls, which are today, Friday the 6th of April. They've stated that they're going to follow the economic indicators and follow the data. And for the time being, not, they don't seem overly concerned about the kind of brewing tensions between Washington, D.C. and also and, and Beijing. Uh, and lastly, to keep an eye out for next week on Friday the 13th of April is the first quarterly numbers from some of the big American banks, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan and Citigroup. And one of the big um, common themes of the US banking sector and in fact the global banking sector has been a slowdown or decline uh, in, the, in, the, in the revenues derived from the trade in the financial markets. Uh, traders, you often hear the, the acronym FIC being bandied about, F-I-C-C, -C. it stands for Fixed Income currencies and commodities. Uh, essentially, uh, with lower volatility in comparison to previous years, and also tighter regulation, and also an, an, an increase uh, um, a, a, an increase uh, to deleverage or, or de-risk some of the trading desks, we are seeing quite a substantial decline in trading revenues from some of the major banks. So, that, so there are a couple of themes to watch out for next week. In relation to what potential markets could we see on the, on the back of the economic indicators that are coming out next week? So I'll take a look now at a, at a few charts. We can see here now we're having a look at the price action of high-grade copper. As I mentioned, uh, China has CPI and PPI numbers coming out next week. Chi 
the, the, the bigger picture is that copper has been riding steadily uh, over, over, over quite a decent period of time. Since last May, copper has been broadly been pushing higher. But in the near term, from basically, say, December onwards, it's been a fairly obvious downward trend. Granted, this area here in around 292.00 has provided decent support. But as you can see, we're currently kind of finding a lot of consolidation in around the 200 day moving average, which comes into play in around 303, 303 cents per pound. So if you do drop below the, the, the 200 day moving average, we could be looking at heading back down towards 292.00. And obviously, any moves north of the 200-day moving north of the 200-day moving average could see the market push on higher from here. I take a look now at the uh, the, the Dow Jones and also the S&P 500, seeing as the, um, the the U.S. indices have been quite volatile in, in recent times. Well, taking a look here at the at the Dow Jones, uh, what we can see is that even though there's a fairly clear example here of lower highs uh, since 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 uh, January of this year. The Dow still has managed to re remain north of the 200-day moving average, even though it's south of it on a couple of occasions. So while we remain north of the 200-day moving average, I suspect the outlook for the Dow Jones is going to remain positive. Um, but in, in areas, in areas to keep an eye out for to the upside, uh, we're currently trading at um, in around 24,250. Should we pr press on higher from here? And if we take out 25,000, we could be looking at heading back to the mid-March high of 25,507. And then if we go north of that, we could be looking at heading up towards the late February high of 25,821. A move back below the 2 day moving average would obviously be quite a, quite, a, quite a bearish indicator. And should that be the case, we could be looking at heading back to the February low of 23,138. Taking a look now at what's going on in the S&P 500, it's a fairly similar looking chart in that we've seen lower highs throughout 2018, but it has managed to, re -get to stay north of the 2 moving average. So once again, while the S&P holds north of the 2 moving average here, which comes into play just shy of 2,600, I expect the outlook for the market is going to remain positive. And in order to keep an eye on forward to the upside will be the 1 day moving average uh, just shy of 2,700. And notice how the one day moving average managed to act as support on a, on a couple of occasions uh, last month. And then if you go beyond 2,700, we can then be looking at heading back up towards the, the March high of 2,800. And once again, a drop below the 30 moving average could bring the, the February lows into play at 2,532. And lastly, uh, as, as I know, it's a popular market, I'll have a, a quick look at the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100 is in, uh, it's, it's still, I uh, didn't really have the, the recovery that some of the other, other global indices had, but in the last few sessions, the market is clearly pushing higher. We can see a steady increase in positive momentum, so that, that's confirming the upward move we're seeing in, in the FTSE 100. The next note to keep an eye out for to the upside will be the mid March high of 7,256. And should we go beyond that, the next potential area of resistance could come into play at the late February high of, of 7,340. And if we go beyond that, a, a, a big level to keep an eye out for will be the 7,400 level. And not just because 7,400 is a big psychological level, it also coincides with the 2 day moving average. And if, he, and if he moves north of that, we'll have, take, we'll have set, can I say, a two-month high on the FTSE. And if we go north of that, it could be an indication that the, the, the downward trend over the past couple of months has been shaken off. But failing, failing that, should the market actually fail to take out uh, the, the, the highs of March, uh, should the market turn over on itself and resume the downward trend that it's been in for the last couple of months, in order to keep an eye out for, for the downside would be 7,000. And should we go south of 7,000, keep an eye out then on 6,839, which was a low from last month. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.